Hello everyone. As per my post from yesterday, here's the video I promised on uh, how I've been doing these uh, cool little visual effects with TextMesh Pro where I'm either manipulating vertex colors per character or vertex positions. Now the reason I'm doing this is I've actually had a couple users requesting that functionality. Um, well, actually more like they've been looking at how would they be able to do this. So this is more like a how-to type video. Uh, secondly, I, I just needed a break from uh, working on the implementation of the auto layout system uh, for TextMesh Pro and Unity 4.6. And although it's coming along very well, you know, sometimes it's good to take a, a small break to work on some different type of stuff. So let's uh, get going on this video and take a look at the things we want to look at. So in our scene right now, we've got a game object. And on this object, we basically have a simple script attached to it. I'm going to hit play and we're going to take a look at what the first uh, script does or first portion of it. As you can see here, we're modifying the vertex color uh, per character. Um, and more importantly, we're actually modifying the vertex colors per character. As you can see, we can set up different gradients or different uh, vertex colors per character. This is kind of neat, you know, if you are looking at a way to reveal one character at a time or if you're doing like a karaoke app or some reading application and you'd like to highlight one letter at a time or a word at a time, this is certainly uh, something you could use. The next example we're going to look at is this wave here. Now this one, um, instead of modifying vertex colors, we're actually modifying the vertex positions, we're actually applying an offset on each letter based on some animation curve as you can see here with my cursor. Um, we can control obviously the speed and so on and so forth. So this is another cool little example. Now the next one we're going to look at is this jitter effect which doesn't jitter but hey it's a different one. Um, so in this case here you can see that we're applying some kind of a rotation on each of the characters based on some pivot point and they're all going at different rates and they all have like a different range of motion. So it makes, you know, for a pretty cool example. So let's take a look at how this is actually done. So if we go in Visual Studio, we can see that in our awake function, we're adding a text mesh pro component to this uh, game object. We're setting the text on the text mesh pro object based on this string up here. We're enabling word wrapping, setting up a color gradient, enabling vertex color gradient. We're then getting a reference to the text container so that we can set its width. And then we're going to force a mesh update. Now, why are we forcing a mesh update and what does force mesh update do? Well, Text Mesh Pro generates or processes the mesh once per frame if needed uh, just before Unity renders the frame. Now, in most cases, that's totally fine, but in other cases, you may need to get information out of your mesh before it's rendered. Let's say you want to get access to the bounds because you're trying to position it somewhere. Or in this case, I'm trying to get access to the vertex colors so I can modify them before the object is actually rendered. So in this case, we're saying, hey, render it right now so that just right after I can get information out of it and manipulate it further. Okay, so that's basically what Force Mesh Update does. From there, we look at our start function, and based on the selection we've made, we're going to call different coroutines. Then the coroutine we're going to look at is this uh, Animate Vertex Positions 2. In this one, we're basically going to predefine a bunch of speeds and angles and range for up to 1,024 characters, because we don't know how many characters we're going to have, so we'll preset them uh, all together, right? So those are all random. Then we have a big loop here where we're going to iterate through it 10,000 times, but the important part of it is the inner loop where we're going to look at each character one at a time. So what we're first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a character count on this text mesh pro object. So text mesh pro has a class called text info which contains different structures. One of them is the character info structure, another one is the line info, one's the word info, and then there's mesh info. So in this case, the first piece that we want is a character count, so we know how many characters we have to iterate through. We're going to basically, just so we don't have to type this thing uh, all the time, just uh, set up a temporary uh, uh, structure here that holds our character info. We're going to take a look at whether or not this character is visible. If it's not visible, then obviously we don't want to do anything to it, so we'll just skip to the next one. Then we're going to get an index of the vertex or the first vertex for each character so we know which ones to manipulate. 
okay? Then we need to calculate or figure out where the middle top line is for each character. So if we go back to our example and I let it play, what we're looking for essentially, and let me pause it right here, is they're pivoting from this point here. So we're trying to look for this point, which is basically the midpoint between the bottom left and bottom right, and then it's our top Y position. So again, this character info uh, structure contains all that information because since we did the force mesh update, it's already been populated, so we have all the data that we need. So we're basically seeing bottom left, bottom right, for X, give us the halfway point between that, and then we're looking for the Y position, the top Y position of the object. Now, in order to do our matrix operation, um, we needed that point so we can offset the mesh so we can set up literally a pivot point up here. So now we know where the midpoint is, we'll apply the offset, then we're gonna compute our angle of the rotation, we're going to basically uh, set up our matrix, uh, transform, rotate, and scale. In this case, we're only rotating, um, so we're only we only care about the angle. But we set that up. Then we're going to apply or perform the operation on the vertices of that letter. And once that's done, we're going to reset our pivot back to where it was. So we we add our offset in this case, and then we put it back where it belongs. And then whatever changes we did to the angle or speed, we're going to store it per character. And as we do this for each letter, then we're going to go back to the bigger loop and do that so we can, you know, have them animate and do it over time. So that's essentially what this script does. So let's go back to our script and take a look at it a little bit more, not the script, but the visual effect more in depth. So as you can see, they're, they're all dangling and doing their stuff. But some cool things are I can basically erase this and say this is another example. If I can spell the word right. So as you can see, it's while it's running, I can add text, I can change it, I could have another script like a, a counter or something on screen where the text is updated every frame and it would still do what we expect it to do. So let me hit undo so we go back to our normal string here. Like I can cancel uh, the vertex color gradient, I can change the uh, alignment, right, center, and left. So we have full control over that. But let's take a look at something else. Um, right now this is kind of cool, right, because they're dangling from here, but it might be cooler if we had a different font to play with. So I went on the internet and found this other font called Hang Letters, and in this case, they, you know, that's what the TTF looks like, uh, minus the gradient and all the rest of the stuff, but they all, they all have this little dangling thing. And in this case, the pivot's actually set up up here, which is same thing, it's the, if I pause it and select the object, and find one where there's not that many quads visible. So if we look here, again, bottom left, bottom right, top point here, that's where we set up our pivot, and it looks really cool. So if you look at the text, we have like a small bevel applied to it with sort of a wood texture on each character. All right, so let me unpause it and make the, uh, the mesh go away so we don't see it, and here we have it. So it's kind of a cool you know, silly example of things we can do with text and text mesh pro and with the script and manipulating those vertex colors or vertex positions uh, each frame. So hopefully uh, this was interesting to you. Should you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post. Thank you again for watching.